At 7 o'clock this morning, an earthquake measuring 7.6 on the Richter scale struck at a depth of 20 kilometres near the Kermadec Islands, just under 1,000 kilometres northeast of New Zealand. A tsunami alert was issued, then cancelled. But the earthquake was big. Its energy was five times greater than the largest earthquake to have hit Christchurch. And on average, the Kermadec Trench sees more tectonic activity than any other part of New Zealand, well, the mainland. So what's there? How does it connect with New Zealand and what does it mean for us? Tonight we have a beginner's guide really to the very deep, very volcanic and very shaky world of the Kermadec Trench. Before this century, no people in human history had seen images like these from hundreds and even thousands of metres down in the Kermadec Trench. It's an utterly unreal environment just off our coast. Filmed as part of the Hardeep Project, a series of research expeditions undertaken by the University of Aberdeen, the University of Tokyo and New Zealand's own Niwa. What they found was alien, yes, obviously so, but also, well, strangely familiar to New Zealanders in some respects. A world of volcanoes and earthquakes. Starting at Todonga, this graphic from Niwa shows us inside the Kermadec Trench. It begins just northeast of the Bay of Plenty, quickly becoming very deep, the bluer the deeper, falling 10,000 metres at its deepest. And inside it are a series of volcanoes. The first, Clark, is just 130 kilometres off New Zealand. They then follow like a mountain range. Tangaroa rises from the ocean floor to only 600 metres beneath the sea surface. Next is Rumble 5, roughly the same height as Mount Tongariro in the North Island. Then Rumble 3, which is even taller again, and is thought to have very recently erupted, possibly even knocking the top off. And on north to a closely grouped range that includes a volcano called Healy, thought to have had a very major eruption around 1360, but to have done little or nothing since, and then Brothers, the most active of these volcanoes. It's three times the size of White Island and roughly 400 kilometres northeast of Tauranga. So it's a volcanic and tectonic wonderland under the sea. And this strange world is very much part of the Ring of Fire, the most famous or even infamous tectonic feature on the planet. This map shows you the so-called Ring of Fire or Pacific Ring. 40,000 kilometres long, it travels up the west coast of America, across to Asia, down to just above Australia through Indonesia and PNG, then turns through today's epicentre and on down to us. Japan today and Christchurch are marked by circles, but 90% of the world's earthquakes take place along it. And as GNS science educator Julian Thompson explains, it's the backbone of New Zealand's fault line system. This map shows the plate boundary in the region of New Zealand. And you can see this very distinct feature going from north to south and right through the country like that. Up here, we have the Pacific Plate diving underneath the Australian Plate and the collision, the rate of collision is about 25 centimetres a year. That's incredibly fast. Fortunately for us, down by New Zealand, this rate of collision slows down to about um, 50 millimetres, 5 centimetres, or a bit less in the area around Wellington. And then in the Alpine Fault, where the two sides are rubbing past each other, the rate of, of that movement is about 30 millimetres a year, with some uplift on one side. Here, the plate boundary is just off the east coast. It comes in very close to, to Wellington. And then it continues to somewhere in Kaikoura sort of area, cuts across the South Island and goes down the west coast. And this is the Alpine Fault in the South Island down there. And then it continues further south like that. So um, any part of this area of New Zealand, in fact any part of the country, is susceptible to earthquakes. This is Raoul Island, the only inhabited part of the wider Kermadec group, home to a small number of New Zealand scientists, the closest people on the planet to today's earthquake. I mean, it, it woke me up this morning, and um, it's definitely the strongest earthquake oh, that we've um, experienced here, or the existing team. And, uh, you know, it started out exciting and then um, moved into, you know, how serious is this going to be? Um, Tim, the mechanic who was at the office, said he was looking out the window and, and the aerials and trees were shaking. But um, where I was at the hostel where we live, 
Um, the building was rattling around a bit, but nothing was falling off shelves. And um, there was no damage and, and nobody was hurt. Um, yeah, you just kind of, you've just got to sit it out and, and hope that it's not going to get too serious. And it didn't, not this time, and maybe not for centuries. But the ocean in and around the Kermadec Trench does contain potential for disaster. One day, who knows when, these seas will be pushed up by a giant earthquake and a giant tsunami will happen. The tsunami warning this morning was wrong, but perhaps a useful reminder of the extraordinary, unpredictable world in the sea just off our coast.